not exactly sure where to begin here, so I guess we'll start from the beginning. I was looking for a new security system. We've had the same one for a few years now. It was at the old office. We brought it over to our house and it's been working out well, I guess not tremendously well, otherwise I wouldn't be in the market for a new one. So I reached out on Twitter to you guys and asked for recommendations, and I was overwhelmed by how many of you recommended and just ranted and raved about Ubiquiti's Unify Protect system. Turns out they actually saw that thread of tweets. I think some of you guys were probably tagging them, so thanks for that. But they actually reached out to me and offered to send me some samples to try myself. So that's what you see here. Today I'll be setting up some of their cameras and a few other devices to get my feet wet with their ecosystem for the first time. And by the end of the video, I'll give you guys my first first impressions because I can't really give a dedicated review unless I've used this system for at least a couple weeks in my opinion. So uh, it'll be an initial impressions type of thing and I'll also walk you through uh, how the setup went for me. But for now, why don't we talk about the individual products? Speaking of which, this is not a kit or a bundle that came all included. Everything that Ubiquiti sells is a la carte, which makes it kind of confusing if you're a first time user or you're new to uh, any of the products that they sell. But at the same time, it does ensure that every item that you're buying is specifically catered to your exact needs. So you do get sort of this more tailor-made experience overall. Let's start with the actual cameras. I have five cameras in this setup that I'm starting with. I may expand that down the line, but we're gonna start with these two uh, G4 Pro cameras. These are 4K cameras. They're outdoor weather resistant IP67, um, and they shoot at 3840 by 2160, up to 24 frames per second. The field of view is 108 degrees horizontally, which I feel is a little low compared to some of the other outdoor security cameras I was looking at, but I'm gonna wait to get everything up and running before I make any snap judgments. The other thing I should mention is that both of these G4 Pros will be going in our front yard because it's a relatively large yard with a longer driveway. Uh, there's a street in front of that, plus neighbors across the way. So I wanted to ensure we were getting the highest resolution and best picture quality available from the Unify Protect cameras. And uh, this being their flagship model, I feel like that's the best fitted camera for the job. These are also PoE or power over ethernet units. So they actually get all of their power and send all of their data through a single ethernet cable. There's no AC power that you have to deal with here. It's literally just that one cable. So you are gonna need something like a PoE switch if you're gonna be setting these up properly, which we'll touch on in just a moment. Now on that note, I have already done all of the pre-wiring needed in my house to get this system up and running. So I ran all the ethernet cables through the attic. I did a whole video on it. So I'll put a link in the description or maybe a card somewhere if you wanna check that out to find out exactly how I set all that up. These do have built-in infrared LEDs. So they're supposed to be really good with night vision. We'll probably be able to test that out tonight at some point. They also support 3X optical zoom, which allows you to punch in on a subject without incurring the same kind of quality loss that you'd find with digital zoom. We also have a built-in microphone, although it doesn't support two-way audio. So while you can still hear all of the sounds that the camera picks up, you can't use the camera as an intercom or a walkie-talkie, so to speak. Finally, it does come included with all the mounting hardware and accessories that you need to get it mounted on a wall or a roof trimming or something like that. Moving on to the G3 Pro, we have two of these cameras as well. These will be going in our backyard. These are pretty much sporting a lot of the same features that we just rattled off for the G4 Pros, with the exception that these are 1080p cameras up to 30 frames per second, and their ethernet port supports up to 100 megabits per second, whereas you get up to 1000 megabits per second on the G4 Pro. From the spec sheet, the only other real difference I could find between these two models was the field of view of this uh, is, is slightly better at 110 degrees horizontally versus 108. Our fifth and final camera is the G3 Micro. This is a compact indoor camera, so it's not weatherproof. Don't try to put it outside. It's specifically for indoor use, and it's much more compact uh, to accommodate that environment. This is gonna be going inside of our garage because we've got a few things in there that we wanna keep tabs on. It's a really nice camera. It's 1080p, 30 frames per second, still has night vision, still has a microphone. This microphone is uh, two-way audio supported, however, so that's kinda cool. Additionally, this camera connects to your system wirelessly over a dual band 802.11n connection, rather than using PoE or an ethernet cable. So you do need to power it with uh, with an AC adapter. However, it does come included with an 802.3 AF power adapter. So if you had an existing network install, you could integrate it very easily that way as well. I think it also has the widest, yeah, it does have the widest viewing angle of the three models that we just went over at 120 degrees. That brings us to our non-camera devices, which are still very important to getting this system up and running, starting with our eight port power over ethernet or PoE switch. This is a 150 watt unit. It supports up to eight PoE cameras. So eight individual ethernet ports there that all deliver uh, power as well as allow for the transferring of data. And last but certainly not least, we have our Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, which at its core is our video storage solution. It comes included with a one terabyte mechanical hard drive that's upgradable up to five terabytes, but it also serves as sort of the central hub for controlling and monitoring all of our networking and video camera devices. Apart from 
than that, the unit has a front panel display to give you an at a glance look at your vital system stats. Uh, there's also a built-in battery so that in the event of power loss, the hard drive shuts down safely instead of risking data loss or corruption, things like that. Now bear in mind the Unify Protect solution only offers local storage. It doesn't do cloud backups or anything like that, so you don't have to deal with any licensing fees. It's completely licensing free, which is one of the reasons it's become such a popular option in this market space when you have a bunch of other companies trying to force monthly subscriptions down your throat. So that's pretty much the entire system. At the time of filming, this is roughly a $2,000 system as you see kitted out on my desk. And that's not cheap. Um, I think the current system that I have was 350 bucks. It's only four cameras, but that's still a fraction of what everything here costs. So I'm really hoping and honestly expecting this system to deliver in all the areas where my current system falls short. Uh, and that includes better picture quality. I want better image quality overall with all the cameras, a better mobile experience, particularly one that doesn't take you 20 minutes to find and play back an old recorded clip with the stupid little scroll bar that's hypersensitive and doesn't work well. It's a piece of crap. Uh, and then finally, system stability and reliability. Right now, if I were to try to pull up a live feed on this, on this phone, maybe 20 seconds before it actually pops up. And occasionally it won't even work. So I'll have to relaunch the app, which then is like two minutes later, I finally get the image on screen defeats the purpose of a live feed. So I'm pretty fed up with my current system. I'm really hoping that this one can rectify a lot of those issues, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, so I think what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna install the cameras. I'm gonna get everything set up, show it off to you running in full capacity and talk about it. Give you my first impressions, what's working, what's not, what do I like, what do I not? And then I'll probably end the video and eat something, hopefully in an environment where you're not all watching me. Uh, as always, links to all this stuff is found in the description below. Feel free to check that out if you're at all interested. But without further ado, ladies and gents, we have a lot to get done today, so let's get to it. system is now up and running, although I only installed one of two backyard cameras since the walls where they'll be mounted to are still unfinished and I didn't want to have to uninstall multiple cameras once the contractors are ready for plastering. But anyway, the other four cameras are live and installation was pretty much a breeze for the most part. The easy mounting mechanism allowed me to install each camera in roughly 10 to 15 minutes, not including cable management, and even less time for the small and simple G3 Micro. Like our cloud key, three of the cameras are connected directly to the PoE switch, while I purchased a PoE adapter separately for the fourth camera, which is connected to a basic switch in our living room that's wired back to the router. This is not what most people would do, but it made sense for my setup since I'll be using a switch in our living room for media console devices that's just a few mere feet away from the camera. With everything connected, setup was made quick and easy by downloading the Unify Protect mobile app and following the on-screen prompts. You can monitor and control the cameras through the mobile app or a web browser on a PC. Both have been working really well for me so far. For desktop use, Ubiquiti recommends Chrome for the best experience, and after having numerous lockups in Firefox, I can definitely see why. After accessing my cloud key controller, I was able to see all my camera feeds in glorious HD. The image quality is way better than my old system, and it lets me see more detail at greater distances. I wasn't too surprised to find that the quality of the smaller, cheaper G3 Micro trails behind the others noticeably, but it's perfectly fine for indoor use. I was worried about the outdoor cameras at first because they seem to be struggling with exposure, appearing blown out in the sunlight, but thank goodness the HDR option provides the high dynamic range needed for a much clearer image. Looking at the before and after of my car parked in the shade shows what a dramatic improvement this makes. It's worth noting that the G3 Micro lacks HDR support, but this would only be a big concern if it was mounted outdoors. Night vision works great with decent range and clarity. My only gripe here is that one of the G4 Pros keeps toggling infrared on and off at night, regardless of the infrared sensitivity setting I choose. And yes, I get a notification every couple of minutes when this happens. 
Keeping infrared enabled fixes this, but then I have to manually disable it every morning when the sun comes up. I wish Protect had a scheduler for things like this. Enable infrared during night hours, switch it off during the day. It's a simple solution that's just not possible at the moment. Within the platform, you'll find a ton of settings to tweak and tune for a tailored setup, record continuously or by motion only, set how many seconds to record before and after motion is detected, and create custom motion zones with adjustable sensitivity. Taking some time to optimize these settings was definitely key to getting the cameras to log all legitimate motion events without racking up a bunch of false alerts. And now I have the cameras behaving as I'd like them to for the most part. I'm still getting false alerts at night when bugs fly near the cameras, but perhaps that's my own fault for luring them in with that sexy blue status light. I'll probably end up disabling it, not because I want to, but because I have to. Motion alerts are fast and accurate with immediate notifications that bring you right to the recorded clip. Emails with screenshots of the detected motion arrive quickly too. Overlay options include timestamp, camera name, logo watermark, and bitrate, and there's sliders for setting your camera's bitrate and FPS as well. I was surprised to find so many picture settings, such as brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and sharpness, which can all be configured to your taste like a friggin' Instagram post. You can set other things, like the camera's focus point, flip the image vertically or horizontally, and adjust infrared behavior and sensitivity. The optical zoom on the pro cameras is pretty awesome and lets you punch in for finer detail. Being able to read small text on the license plate 30 feet away would have been an impossible task for our old cameras, but it's a walk in the park here. Having said that, after zooming in, I wish the software would let you adjust the framing in order to target a specific area. Guess I'll just have to get off my butt and move the camera myself. The split live view on desktop is great for seeing all camera feeds at once and can be full screen for 24 seven monitoring. Unfortunately, the feature isn't available on the mobile app, which would have been a nice touch for docked tablets. On the bright side, finding and playing back footage on mobile is 100 times better than what I'm used to. Live feeds appear on command within a second or two. Yes, it's amazing. And there's a timeline you can zoom into when scrubbing through footage. Here you'll also find thumbnails for each motion event that can be tapped to playback clips easily. Even simpler is the activity feed that cuts out the timeline altogether and shows you all motion events in a list that you can pull up by date. All of these features and a whole lot more are available on the desktop app as well. It's only been a wee 24 hours that I've spent with Unify Protect, but I'm already enjoying it so much more than my old setup. While it's not perfect, no security system is, the platform's shortcomings are vastly outweighed by what it gets right, which is perhaps why our new home now feels safer than ever. But that's all I got for now, guys. Let me know if you've got any security cameras at home and how they've been working out for you so far. Apart from that, feel free to toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and check out the new merch store for shirts and hoodies with the new heatsink logo. It's sure to make you cooler instantly. Till next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.